I'm Steve Mornelli, and you're with the Animal Innovation Show. Awesome. Great introduction. So tell us who you are, Steve, and how you're innovating to help animals. Well, thank you so much, Chris, for having me on the show. So Waggle.org is a nonprofit that we started about two and a half years ago. I'm the CEO and founder. Uh, we started Waggle recognizing that there are over a half a million pets lost every single year because people cannot afford veterinary care. Wow. Sometimes as little as two or three hundred dollars they can't write a check for and they have to relinquish their pet or see their pet euthanized. It's a horrible situation. Yeah. That's why we started Waggle.org, the crowdfunding platform. Wow. I didn't realize there was that many people. I mean, that's that's a staggering number. And that is actually a very conservative number. Our partners at uh, what in the insurance industry, Trupanion and others uh, that have really reliable research data suggest that, that number could actually be upwards of a million. And that is a huge number. And this is just because people don't have the financial means or whatever's going on. I mean, still in a pandemic, right? And um, or they face surgery or whatever it might be. And when they can't do that, they don't, like you said, they don't really have a choice. I think so many people find themselves, pandemic or not, in a situation they never planned for. I suspect a lot of your listeners would never anticipate they'd be in a situation where they couldn't write a check uh, for what, you know, sometimes is a small amount of money, sometimes a very large amount of money. Uh, if they found themselves without insurance or other means or family or support uh, or, or just overwhelmed with bills, especially during a pandemic, of course, yeah. um, it becomes a life or death decision, literally. Wow. And I know from doing a lot of the animal rescue work, I mean, one of the things we're talking about is shelter prevention, right? Trying to keep the animals out of the system in the first place. And this seems like it would fit or dovetail nicely into that as well. That's exactly right. We work with a lot of animal rescues and shelters and other types of uh, animal welfare groups that we provide support to individuals and the general public. The idea is how do we bring together the power of community, right? How do we enable people to uh, let their friends and their family and uh, their local community media, everybody pitching in by just a little bit, can make this huge impact. We're all aware of large crowdfunding platforms. Right. Uh, and you know, they, in many cases, two, three billion dollars a year go across these platforms for a lot of different causes and make a, make a huge difference in our society and our lives. But we started Waggle because we recognize that donors often just don't know where that money's going. There's a lot of bad actors out there. We see it every single day in the, in the newspaper, in the news. Uh, it doesn't take much to, to say, hey, you know what? One other person was ripped off. Waggle purpose-built, special built to solve this problem, but do so with transparency and trust. All of our donors know exactly where their money's going because we do something different. The money that we raise, goes directly to the veterinary hospitals. No one's doing this at scale like we are. Yeah, I was gonna say, walk us through, tell us a little bit about how it works. How is it different than, you know, like you said, the GoFundMe or the Kickstarters or Cuddlies of the world. You know, this this seems like a very different and more transparent approach. It is, and uh, it was actually based on a model in the, in the uh, human healthcare space called Watsi. It was a very innovative, uh, highly innovative technology platform, crowdfunding platform, again, dedicated to, to people in need of medical care that found themselves in difficult situations. For us, we're purpose-built. So unlike a lot of the, the big crowdfund, crowdfunding platforms, the names that you mentioned and others that uh, people recognize right off, um, Waggle it really came to prominence very quickly and very soon because there was this transparency and trust knowing that everything we do is special purpose, purpose built to solve this problem that is uh, economic euthanasia. It might be a term that a lot of your listeners are not aware of. I certainly wasn't when I started Waggle. Economic euthanasia, right? It's a little, uh, you know, maybe even hard to say, right? And people aren't aware of it. Um, but it really means that, right? If people can't afford the cost uh, of uh, dog surgery and medical treatment that might be emergent, um, could be other types of care, uh, we're not trying to do everything for everybody, right? We're specifically built to solve to help dogs and cats and soon other species. Um, and again, because the, the, the monies go directly to the veterinary hospital, that's the biggest differentiator. We also bring the, the, the story back to the individual donors. We let them know uh, the difference that they have made with their contribution. We do this for every single case. That's something that uh, you know the big platforms just can't do because they're well, they're too big. Yeah. 
So walk me through, so if I, if, is it marketed at me, the pet owner? Is it marketed at the vet hospitals? Is, like, how are you guys getting the word out there? And, and maybe more specifically, how does the process work? Yeah, so how we get the word out there, we started here in New England by reaching out to local emergency and uh, veterinary referral hospitals, the, 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 the special needs, right, when an emergency situation uh, comes about. Um, and we did that purposely because these are very large hospitals and we knew that they would have a geographic imprint. But what happened from there was really interesting. Uh, all of the large hospitals that started to use our platform and see their clients and need get funded, they in turn uh, brought brought us to their clients, which were the small mom and pop veterinary hospitals. So it was sort of like a theater that went out from the large hospitals to the smaller mom and pops in the local communities that so many of us visit. And then interestingly enough, from there it started to spread to the rescues and the shelters once they got wind that we could, could really do something and help them in a way that uh, uh, these other organizations could not do. We really started to grow organically and quickly and it became sort of word of mouth. Uh, people in the veterinary industry knowing that we're solving the problems that they see every single day, the rescue you see every day, so many of these pets being put down, uh, you know, the term waggle, waggle dog word started to, to really spread. So how does it work? So do I come out there and do I create a fundraiser for my animal when I've got this situation, right? My dog needs surgery, I can't afford it. Am I creating my own fundraiser or is somebody else doing it for me? Well, for the most part, you are doing it. But what's really interesting here, people will find out about Waggle in a variety of ways. It may have been from that from the emergency hospital, it may have been from the local veterinary hospital, from the rescues and so forth. We do a lot of marketing. We do a lot of uh, conversations like this with other great organizations that help spread the word. But it's really as simple to going to waggle.org and creating an account. The entire process can take as little as 10 minutes. That's what's so interesting about it, right? Because you know, again, we're not uh, we're not in Cuban's healthcare space. We're not trying to raise money to start your business. We're not trying to uh, put an addition on your house. We're trying to save your dog and your cat, right? So the questions that we ask, the the uh, the pictures that we have you upload, it's a very quick process because we know it works. We do it time and time again. Um, we know what's what helps people really hit their goals and be successful. So because of all that, because it's all that we do, the process can take just minutes. And so you're right. Uh, you, as let's take you as an example, as the pet owner, you find out about Waggle, you come to waggle.org. Uh, in the short time, you create an account, you register. You have to tell us your story, right? Because it really starts at the grassroot level. The, the highest probability of, of reaching your goal. And by the way, even if you don't hit the $2,000 goal, Maybe it's two or three hundred dollars that you raise. That goes a long way uh, in many of these cases to solve so many of these problems. Um, so, in this short period of time, you up, up, you tell us about your story. You upload a few pictures of your dog or your cat. That comes to our team. We we look it over. We do a check and balance to make sure everything looks great. We publish it to our website. Then we have a lot of tools that are purpose built directly in the uh, in the campaign that, that shows up at our website that allow you to bring it to your social media, to Facebook, to Instagram, to email your friends, and it's that power uh, of the word spoken word or written word in this case that really makes all the difference. And then, like you said, is now people come out and they are donating to my campaign. But the money's not coming to me, right? The money's going directly to the veterinary hospital that's that's taking care of the animal. Yeah, that's exactly right. We find that there's a higher propensity for donors to, to become activated, to, to open their wallet and give a little bit more, knowing that they have this assurance, right? You know, we see a lot of bad actors out there, right? They even try to come onto our platform. Um, we're really good about vetting them. We get the invoices from the hospital. We know where everybody, you know, that's the other part. We know who these people are, where we know where the money's going. So the donors have in their mind, they say to themselves, you know what, maybe we can give a little bit extra. Maybe we can tell our friends and family to help participate on this, uh, you know, uh, tug of the heart case that might be in front of them. And, and that's only part of the equation, right? So it's those donors that are, are known by the pet owner, but we did something else that I think is actually really exciting. And if I can talk a minute about our influencers and our partners mm -hmm. that uh, are really the uh, the oil and the machinery that's making this grow so quickly. Okay. Yeah, please. So, you know, when we started to add more hospitals and more foundations, even uh, entities like 
um, Maddie's Fund and Greater Good Charities. These are well-established, very large organizations that looked at us and said, my God, you know, we can help support this organization. Um, we love what they're doing. They're helping so many of these nonprofits across the U.S. They became engaged and they supported us financially and otherwise. Um, but then it also started to get really kind of fun and interesting because we caught the attention of social influencers. These are names that a lot of people may or may not know. Uh, amazing, amazing people like Lil Bub, uh, who has millions of followers, right, for, for his cat that uh, came to acclaim. Um, but then we even grew larger uh, still with celebrities like Miranda Lambert and others. And there's a large list, Trisha Helfer, Mayim Bialik from uh, Big Bang Theory. And, and what they do for us, Chris, is they, they will take one or two of the, the, the pets that appeal to them. They'll bring them out to their networks and share what we're doing in such a different way. And this is where it gets really exciting. So many people that know them, they trust them, they see what we're doing. Yeah. They uh, they come and they and they participate and then guess what? Not only does that one pet get funded typically, but there if there's any excess money, right? We're very transparent about this. It allows us to create a fund uh, either in the under the Waggle Foundation or under the name of each of these influencers that we can have a multiplying effect. We call sort of um, uh, philanthropic venture capitalists, right? That one dollar turns mm -hmm. into two. So you'll see at our site. All these amazing success stories, and a lot of them have matching donations from these amazing supporters of ours, and then it amplifies from there and it just keeps growing. It's extraordinary. Yeah, that's a really cool idea. That, like you said, it's almost like the excess, right? Once they've funded over and above, it's not like you're refunding it back to the donors. You're paying it forward, and you're 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 having that cumulative effect. Your expression is spot on. Can I write that down? Because we're going to take that with you. You're 100. Yeah, percent I'll be your marketing guy. <laughs> you're your marketing, but it's that it's that uh, that amplification. And so we now do that for foundations, celebrities, influencers, even corporates uh, are getting involved. And uh, that's where I think we're going to get to the point where we can put a real dent in this 500,000 pets. Right. So let's get to the point where we're saving 50,000 dogs and cats and soon horses and rabbits a year, that is going to be an extraordinary milestone. Yeah. So take us back. You said it was two and a half years ago that you started this. So take us back three years ago. Like, I mean, what was going on that spawned this idea? It's a really great idea. Well, thank you. And I, I wish the concept were all mine. Um, as I mentioned, it was, uh, again, at Watsi that gave me the idea to, to apply it to this vertical. Um, but, it, you know, I, I suspect maybe you, maybe uh, the, the listener here to your show, uh, maybe they found themselves in a certain situation, a certain point in time in life. By way of background, I came from a much different space. I was a, a, a trained as an engineer and I worked on everything from submarines to satellites. And uh, after I did my MBA, I was uh, working in New York um, in the field of economic research, right? equity research and um, equities. And I did that in New York and London. And to be frank, when the markets kind of went south, um, those, those jobs sort of were eviscerated. And sure. to be frank, I just wasn't happy. Right. And I started working for a large consulting company in the data science space. And, uh, you know, one day I said, I was nearing 50. I said, you know, what am I going to do? Am I going to do this for the next 25 years and look back and say, I didn't help anyone. Right? Didn't make a difference in the world. And, uh, you have to either, either have to double down or you have to pull the plug and say, you know what, I'm just going to do something different. And that's, that was the point I got to, um, so I was kind of, I was very receptive to doing my own thing. And the article came out around that sort of first philanthropic seed investment in Watsi. And I said, it was like a, it was like a, a bolt of lightning. If, yeah. if I want, I want you and your listeners to, to think it for a moment, if you take that beloved cat or dog that you've had for 10 years and you know, Bill faces you of $500, right? And you got to take that pet hand them across the table, picture that, hand them across the table, I can't I can't afford this $500. That's the moment I said, you know, if we bring everybody together in a certain way with transparency and trust and everybody chips in a little bit, um, that's step one, right? We, we, we can really make a difference. 
Yeah. So, so that's step one, right? Yeah. So what's next? What's steps two through five? I mean, what's the, I mean, you've come so far in just a short time in two and a half years. I mean, where's your vision? Where, where's this going to go? Well, the vision is to bring sort of a consortium. If we can bring in more of the pet industry, the large players, whether they're veterinary hospitals or pharmaceutical companies, to get them involved so they know what we're doing, that they can help support us and bring this back because ultimately they're supporting the professionals that they care about most. And that's an important concept, right? If we keep this, everything within the veterinary industry and the professionals, this entire ecosystem, we've talked about veterinary hospitals and rescues and shelters and the general public, but now let's fold in more foundations. Let's fold in uh, different sub-industries within the pet, pet profession. Um, then we talk about retailers. I think if think about the difference, we, if we can put you know a hundred million dollars to play, right, uh, to bring this back and save these pets. What an extraordinary thing that we could do! And 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 they're supporting everyone that they care about most. That's the part that appeals to me most. Yeah, it's really cool. Like you said, when you start thinking about this, the scalability of it, and what you've done is figured out that secret sauce as to how to scale this because. You know, doing it on a small scale is great and it's helpful, but you guys are doing it on, I'm guessing, thousands and thousands of transactions. Yeah, we are. And we're literally getting in front of tens of millions of people. And But, you know, the, the exciting concept here, uh, we also offer, which is from a sustainability perspective, our forever fund. And it's interesting because a lot of people will come and they'll say, you know, in surprising number, we, we love what you do. I can't pick one dog or cat. Sure. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I can't do it. I just can't do it. So we start. We launched the Forever Fund, and that allows us to and our team to uh, pick a number of pets every month, support them, support it supports our mission. And we've just seen this huge influx of people that are saying, you know what? Even if I sign up for ten dollars a month, right? We can help so many pets. And, and in fact, it, you know, the, the the other part of the the answer there, Chris, is um, phase two and three is how do we let more people know to advise them to get when they get that puppy. That you've, this it's inevitable that there's going to be a time in that in that dog or cat's life where there's going to be funds needed. Plan for it, a rainy day fund, right? Uh, this is the same. It's the same concept, right? If you can't afford uh, uh, pet insurance, we hope they do, right? But somehow you have to have some sort of fun so you don't find yourself in this position. We'd, re- we'd like to put ourselves out of business ultimately. Yeah. No, that's always a good goal, right? To be able to do that. And with so many pets and, and pet parents in need, I'm, I'm sure it's going to be a while till you get there. But it's definitely a good goal that, you know, I've said the same thing about Dubert, right? Like, I'll gladly shut it down when every animal that needs safe and reliable transport has it, right? And we don't have to, we don't have to be here anymore. But right now, that's not the case. Right. That's why I think our missions are so well aligned. Yeah, me too. So, I mean, this is really cool. And I'm, I'm excited to talk to you. And, and obviously, you and I are looking at opportunities that we can try and do things together. Is there anything else you wanted to mention tonight before we wrap things up? Well, so, you know, if, if your listener is there, you know, take a look at waggle.org. Either from a donor perspective, if you if you care to join our Forever Fund or find one pet that appeals to you, if you're somebody in need, my goodness, you know, come come to us for help, join us. And if you're someplace in between, if you're a rescue or a shelter or just somebody that loves what we're doing, spread the word, right? Because we what we try to stay away from is having to buy advertising. Sure. Right? I I don't need I, Facebook. From what I understand, doesn't need more money. Um, Right. Uh, I don't know if Zuckerberg is hurting for cash flow, but uh, we're a nonprofit. Right. So if we're doing things right, uh, we can do this by word of mouth. That means people are coming to us because they love what we do. And that that means, you know, your listeners hopefully will help us spread the word. Well, I, I think it's really cool. I'm really glad that, um, you know, you got out of your engineering day job. Right. And got into this. And I'm really excited to see where this is going to go. So. Of course, we know people can go out to waggle.org and they can create a fundraiser, they can contribute or even just learn more about what you guys are doing because I think it's really it's really something special. Thank you so much, Chris. You, uh, you, you have a great ending to our show. You said it better than I could. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, it was, it was great having you on and we're going to just remind our, our listeners and viewers before we wrap up that if you've got an idea for somebody I should talk to, an innovative product, a service, 
um, or even just an idea that hasn't been uh, implemented yet, just go to innovations.show and let us know and we'll have them on the show with me. So thank you again, Steve. It was great to have you on. Thank you, Chris. Much appreciated.